Welcome to Mission to Inspire, where we share life experiences in our careers, personal lives, society, culture, religion, finance, family, and much more. Meet your host, Shola Ajabadi, as she takes you on a ride to fuel your inspiration. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Mission to Inspire. My name is Shola, and we've got our wonderful guest here with us today. Our name is Judith Keys. Hi, Judith. How are you? Hello. Lovely to be here. Thanks for having me. <laughs> You're welcome. Judith Keys, she is on a mission to inspire us today. So, yeah. <laughs> I am. <laughs> So Judith, she is passionate about um about what she does, and she's going to be talking us through everything that she she's doing around food, um uh, what she wants to also start. So there's something in the pipeline. She was talking us. She'll be talking to us about as well. But she is a passionate advocate for taking bold leaps, embracing change, and pursuing dreams with unwaving courage. So that is actually what she does. She's a proud, proud owner of My Food in France Limited. And also she's the founder of My Best Friend, um, which is a vibrant online community catering um, for the English speaking experts. I'm living in France, if I'm correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah, it's yeah, it's for English speakers who live here in France, the same as me. That's I'm based in France. So okay. yeah. Yes. This... yeah. So um our ambition spirit <laughs> extends to curating unforgettable retreats, nestled amidst the you know beauty of our home in province. You will be talking us through all that as well but before we dive into that we want to know you better so we're going to be asking you some these or that questions okay Are you ready i am always ready <laughs> <laughs> okay fantasy or reality reality uh england or paris Oh, Ooh. that is a hard one <laughs> because it would probably be England, I think. I miss home at the moment. So, yeah, I'll say England. I love being home. Okay. All right. <laughs> we want you back home then. Pack your baggage. <laughs> <laughs> okay, next question. English or French? French. Food or friendship? Oh, friendship always <laughs> if you're to start again where would you like to leave I would love to live in the south of England somewhere near Brighton I absolutely love Brighton great was that where you were living before you went to France then I I worked and lived in Brighton and Lewis for six months before okay. um I moved here and I loved it. I love the people, I love the area, yeah, I love the vibe in Brighton. And yeah, I think I would I would spend some more time there for sure if I could. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna dive into the interview questions now. We're just gonna ask you first about you so what yes. motivated you to pursue your passion for cooking and establish my food in france limited i have always had a passion for food and cooking shola all my life and it came mainly from my grandmother who spent a lot of time cooking with me when i was a kid so she taught me how to make really tasty beautiful simple food yeah. and every time I went to her house to stay mm -hmm. she would cook like just really simple food but I remember always being involved and being in awe of her of the things she made she would make a cake with really simple ingredients but it would turn out 
to be the most delicious thing I had ever eaten. So, and I think in my family, we were all quite foodie. We all liked nice food and, you know, we were always willing to try new things. And yeah, so it's always been a big part of my life. And I think I've always been a creative person. So creating new uh, meals and trying new things um, has been a part of my life. So whilst I have done quite traditional jobs in the past Mm -hmm. I always had this creative side uh, that I wanted to uh, wanted to explore so for example when I worked as a secretary in a law firm for a long time Mm -hmm. I set up a cupcake business on the side and did that as like my side hustle so it's been this little thread that's come through my life and then when I moved to France 10 years ago I started a virtual assistant business so I had that for a long time and um interesting yeah and I absolutely loved it it meant that I could work anywhere and I still have some virtual some clients that I started off with 10 years ago I still work with them so yeah it was whenever I was off having my youngest little boy that I decided to start my food in France the the foodie creative side of me was back again knocking on the door saying do something with this do something with this <laughs> and it had always been there but I think I had the headspace when I was off uh, with my little one um, to sort of come up with how I could make it into a business yeah. and my food in France was born wow wow that is so great so when you went to France it wasn't for the my food in business you started your virtual um online business yeah I started that because when I first came here I wasn't sure what I was going to do mm. I just knew I wanted a change um a very and then, bold step though yeah yeah I wanted something different I had been working as as I said I was a team manager um in a law firm in Edinburgh for around 10 years wow. and I just got to the point where I couldn't really move anywhere. Do you know what I mean? Like I was, I I was watching all the lawyers move up through the ranks and become partners and, uh, you know, and in my position, there really was nowhere for me to go. So I, I felt a little bit stuck. Um, I just bought my first house. I was doing all the things you're supposed to do, Shala. And then I just (laughs) thought, oh no, this is not for me. I need to do something. So, so yeah, I moved here and I wasn't sure what I was going to do, but, um, I, I met lots of people and one of those people was an executive coach. Um, and I decided she actually said to me, oh, you, you could maybe help me with some, some work, you know, some, taking care of her travel and doing you know lots of different things like that helping supporting her role Mm -hmm. and I thought oh yeah yeah of course I can do that so that's when the virtual assistant business was born and I grew that um to a successful company and but then yes then even that became a little bit like being back at the nine to five do you know what I mean like I was back at a desk every day (laughs) um (laughs) And I think that's why this creative side has always been there. You know, it's it needed to come out again. So, yeah. 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 Wow. Well done, you. You took a very bold step. And I think that's really paid off. Yeah, (laughs) I think so. I think so. And I, you know, I. I do. Um, I love my life here. I really miss home sometimes. You know, I'm from Mm -hmm. Belfast in Northern Ireland and um I really miss home um but we've just booked flights actually to go back uh later this year so I'm excited I'll go back and take wow. my kids to meet my family and things oh, so yeah that is so nice so can you share some highlights from your interactive online cook along cat classes and how yes. to enreach the experience so the- of participants The cook along classes are my favorite part of the business. Uh, Um, So the, the My Food in France membership and business is it's a membership model. So people join and they come and become part of the membership. So you pay monthly, it's 27 pounds a month. Mm -hmm. And what you get when you join the membership is 
access more access to me we have a private facebook community so we talk a lot in there about food and you know there's a really lovely community in there already there's people based in france but also based back in the uk and america we have um some american people in there mm -hmm. it's really really great group um and the classes are my highlight but you get one class a month usually at least one where we'll cook together and that is my favorite part because we get to have create something so again this creative side coming out by just using simple ingredients it takes me back to making food with my grandmother making something delicious together and then the people who have joined me go off and can share that food with their family or friends mm. and it's just become such a lovely thing we record them each month as well so they go into my vault um of content so anybody who joins the membership gets access to all the previous cookery classes they're all in there there's loads of videos that I have put in there lots of recipes there's extra content things about meal planning and um you know just lots of useful stuff all to do with food and it's not just French food mm -hmm. I have called the business my food in France yeah. because I love food from all over so there is a bit more you know I'll teach some nice French dishes as well obviously I live here but um, it's food from anywhere. So one of my members recently, Nikki, has requested that we do quesadillas next month. So that's going to be our cook along class in wow. August. We're yeah. going to make some quesadillas together and some more Middle Eastern inspired food as well. We're going to do that later in the year. So we've got lots of things in the pipeline. And I think the highlight for me, though, are those moments when we're together cooking as a group, even though we're far away, we're doing it online it's still a really amazing moment of connection. Wow, that is so interesting. Do you cook the same? Is it the same recipe, the same menu? So I, what happens is I'll, um, I'll sometimes ask in the membership, like, what do you fancy cooking next yeah. month? So that's where Nikki said she wanted to do the quesadillas or I'll come up with something that we'll cook together. And then I send everybody the ingredients list, mm -hmm. the Zoom link, anything they need that's you know equipment wise and they get that like a week before and then we come together and we all cook the same thing so they if they're unsure I'm with them we're all doing it together so it's just really lovely ah oh, wow that is interesting you yeah. don't get to taste each other's uh, dishes no no we don't <laughs> But we do share photos in the group. We do. We share our photos in. And so it's so funny because sometimes we are all, well, we're always all making the same thing, but quite yeah. often it looks different as well. I'm not really sure that happens. But and this month's class is next week and we are going to be making a savory loaf cake. Ooh. So normally loaf cakes are things like cherry cake or lemon yeah. drizzle cake, that type of thing. They're usually sweet. But yeah. in France, they quite often make a savoury version. So we're doing a courgette and a lardon cake next week. We can do it um, with lardons or you can do it with Parmesan cheese or whatever you want. And it's just a really delicious savour. It's great for summer, for picnics, that type of thing. So that yeah. is what we're doing in the class next week. Uh, uh, interesting. Very interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God. So, um, what inspired you to create my best friend in France? So my best friend in France was born again, a bit like the, my food in France out of something in me that could spot a need, um, in expats. So obviously I'm an expat in France. I'm not French. I yeah. moved here 10 years ago. And I have had lots of struggles along the way, Charlotte. It's not been easy. So um, for expats, it's a very particular thing, I think, because people think, oh, you've moved to France. It must be amazing. You're living the dream. It's yeah. so beautiful there. And mm. wow, you just must, you know, but real life follows you wherever you go. Like I have struggled here. I've struggled with loneliness. I've struggled with um 
isolation and just feeling different from everybody else mm -hmm. it's uh you know you you do have a specific sort of you know there's lots of good stuff happening I'm d extremely privileged to live here I feel I've got a roof over my head my kids are you know they we eat nice food we're fine but there's lots of stuff that it, you want to talk about and you sort of feel like you can't sometimes you know and I wanted to create a space for other expats to come and just have a place to talk so this is where my best friend in France was born um there's so much support for expats for things like visas and schooling for children and there's lots of sort of practical help online but there's very little sort of emotional and social support from what I could tell anyway so I wanted to create this space where we could sort of all be together and just talk about life and support each yeah. other in a less sort of administrative way there's loads of administrative stuff that I could help people with but I don't want to get into that it's more sort of emotional cultural social challenges and let's talk about that um so at the minute it's just a really lovely Facebook community come and join it's free for anybody to join if you are an expat in France or if you're thinking of moving to France come and come in with us it's my best friend in France over on Facebook um, and I've also started a podcast as well if you look up my best friend in France with Judith Keys you'll find my podcast um, as well if you're interested in listening to a little bit of what life is like here in Provence you can listen to that and yeah I just I really love it Shola because it's you know I wanted to help people who have who are in my position you know maybe if I had had someone like me at the start I yeah. might not have struggled with lots of those things you know so yeah 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 that's true that's really interesting wow Thanks. I'm sure you get a lot of guests on your podcast and a lot of people listening in there's so many people that want to do, relocate anyway so mm -mm -mm. it's very interesting I've had some good guests on so far we've had um a really interesting guest, Edvija was her name, and she came to talk about going for a job in France and the challenges of trying to find a job as an expat. Yeah. She's actually French, and she helps expats with the whole application process and what they expect with interview, and you know, just a really, really useful resource for people. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Well done. Well done, you. Great. Thanks. <laughs> Happy days. Yeah. <laughs> oh. so you successful business owner what challenges have you faced along the way so uh, the biggest challenge I'm having at the moment is that a lot of people want to get back to face-to-face -face things since COVID so when I created my food in France it was the tail end of COVID so Okay. There was, you know, people still wanted online things. And I think at the moment it's moving more towards in person. Um, so whilst we have a great community over in my food in France and I want more people to come and join and be part of it, um, I have noticed that trend more for in person. So um the beauty of virtual is that people can come and do the classes from anywhere. So I love that. And I think that's still really relevant and people still do really love that, that they can just come and join a class from anywhere. Um, yeah. And the trend for more in-person stuff, I hope this is the dream for next year, is to create a retreat for people to come and join me actually here in person. And we'll do um, a probably five day retreat here where we'll tour around all the different foodie spots near where I live and we'll go wine tasting and we'll try some cheeses and we'll visit you know the local uh, vineyards and do lots of fun foodie things here take them to my favorite restaurants and also you know just just spend time soaking up the markets and things here so that's the that's the dream for next year is to host an in-person event oh that's good that's good I was thinking that maybe you could also when you're doing the virtual you might be able to have some in person mm. face to face with you um in the yeah and yeah the yeah when I, when i'm here that. yeah yeah for sure i thought about getting some people um to come but obviously cuz where i'm based in france unless i got yeah like a local person to come but it's yeah it's because i'm based in france it is harder for people to come and be here unless it's for like a specific yeah like a retreat or something so um but yeah, I could get like some 
expert foodies around here to come and join me in person on the call. That would be cool. <laughs> it's a good idea. Thanks, Sean. <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay, you've already talked about um, your upcoming retreat, a beat. So, but can you tell us more about um, about it? And the well, experience I... that you aim to provide. Yes, I really, really want to do this because where I live is an extremely foodie part of France that is less well known. So most British people tend to go to the Dordogne or they go to Bordeaux um, and in and around Paris. But very few uh, British people come to this part of France where I am in the southeast. Um, I am inland, so we're a couple of hours from the sea. And I'm in the Drum region and it's really, really well known for um, organic local producers. There's lots of exciting things happening in this part of the world. And I would love to showcase that and for people to come and spend a week with me going around all the markets. The markets here, the closest one to me is one of the most beautiful markets in France. It's been voted as one of the most beautiful food markets in France. So it's just a must see um and then yeah we have the wine the cheese the fruit and vegetables in the summertime are unbelievable here there's so much um to see and smell and taste and you know I just can't wait to share that with people so I think the retreat um will involve staying in a beautiful place nearby obviously and then each day we will do a little outing uh, to go tasting and probably have one meal together every day and then there may be some other things thrown in Um, we shall see some little surprises along the way as well I love organizing stuff like this I've done it before for my other clients um, mm-hmm. where we've organized trips to France for their contacts yeah. so I'm used to doing it and I think I can do a really amazing one for my food in France wow That's something we'll be looking forward to. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. So how can we connect with you? So the best place is just Mm myfoodinfrance.com. On there, you can see uh, the link to the Facebook page. Come and join the free Facebook group. It's My Food in France with Judith Keyes. Just come and find me over on Facebook or yeah. myfoodinfrance.com um, and on there you'll see the different things available so um, on the website you'll see the different products I have available the membership the always the upcoming cookery class that I've got in the membership is also available to anyone externally so you can come in and do if you come and do one of my classes Mm-hmm. you get a free month in the membership so you can test it out and see what you think so if you want to even just come along to a class you get a free month in the membership, a free access to all my vault full of recipes and recorded content. And if you want to stay on, you can. Um, if not, you can just come and have a month in the lovely membership and get to see and know everybody in there. But um, that's the best place. Yeah, myfoodinfrance.com. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Any inspirational advice for our viewers? I would just say that if you have an idea, um, treat it with care and attention mm-hmm. and the and the love that it deserves and give it a chance. So, mm-hmm. you know, things have not always been smooth for me. Uh, you know, I have struggled in business in the past, but I think if you love what you do, it's a it's really good to try. Um, you know, I have. I think been lucky because I had my VA business still in the background. So I didn't have completely, I wasn't starting out from zero. Yeah. Uh, you know, I was, I had that in the background as a little bit of a buffer. Um, so maybe it's about if, if you're in a business already, or if you're in work, mm. that can sometimes be a little, that can be a good time to start planning. I would think about what you might want to do and put some of the wheels in motion when you have time um and then just give it your all just go for it really try and you know if you don't try you'll never know it's true we always have to try yeah yes yes and you can just do it one step at a time I didn't go all in and drop everything else you know I've done it slowly so that would be you know don't 
I wouldn't risk everything. I'm not saying that. I'm saying just take it slow, work out what you need to do to grow your business and start and just build, 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 build. Just take it slow. Yeah. 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 That's true. Just take it slow. But then like you did take a bold step. Cause we don't yeah. take a step. We'll never, we'll never do what we, we'll just think about it or mm-hmm. write it down. I never, never. That's do. what I think. Try, try. There's no harm in trying. And, you know, when I put myself out there with this new business, it was extremely different from the VA stuff. People were like, what? You're doing a foodie thing? What's this? I don't understand. And then two minutes, you know, nobody, it's like people forget two minutes later. They're not there to, they're they're in their own heads. They're not worrying about what you're doing. They're just maybe interested in this new thing and might come and be part of it. And yeah, whatever your new business is, you know, just go for it. Don't worry about what other people think. Just stay on your own path and you know follow your follow your passion for sure exactly follow your dream follow your dream yeah That's dream. yeah thank you so much for joining us today judy thank, thank you shola for having me <laughs> and on to next time on mission to inspire is judy's and shola thank you bye everyone. Bye. Thank you for joining us today on Mission to Inspire. Subscribe if you have not already done so. Like, comment, leave a message. Let's stay connected. Let's jointly inspire the world.